Hello fellow Kaiji fans, it is I, Godzilla Productions TV, and today I am finally going to talk about Ultraman Decker. I've had a lot of you in my comments and stuff saying, oh, it's so much better than Trigger and stuff like that, and if you did say that, you know I had a little bit of opinion in my response. And now I think it's finally time I address, you know, why I think that. Why I don't think it's fixing too much from Trigger. Now I'm only going to talk about the first four episodes today, all the episodes that came out in July. I'm going to try and make it a monthly thing, so all the episodes that came out this month in August, I'll talk about at the end of August. And then September, October, November, December, and so on. However long it takes for the series to end. And I'm doing it just because it seems like a fun thing to do, and also it forces me to make content, because during the school year sometimes I lose track of time. But let's start off with episode one and the issues I had with it. They didn't make Kanata likable at all. In fact, I hated him after that episode. He's way too much of one of those characters who's just a goody two-shoes for absolutely no reason and is so annoying. Especially a show that's supposed to be like a super tribute to Dinah. And Asuka is one of the best Ultra hosts of all time, yet we get a really stale cardboard cutout. And they also just kind of made him seem really annoying, especially when he was offering rice cakes to the dwarf. It's just like, oh my god, shut up. It reminds me of the worst kind of people didn't help that like that very day or the day before or something like that I was at the mall some little kids were trying to sell me candy and they just kept coming up and doing it and it was getting repetitive and it felt exactly like what he was doing and then something I want to address is the guns the fact that they're all using normal guns and I know a lot of people like that but I think that is so incredibly stupid yes I prefer an Ultraman where they use normal guns like that However, following up Ultraman Trigger, where they made it a point in the first episode of Ultraman Trigger that they're not going back to guns like that. They found a super advanced, way better alternative to guns to fight the monsters with. And then in the Trigger movie, they've got this like super mega gun now that just completely makes normal guns useless. And now, seven years after that, back to normal guns. That is so nonsensical, I can't get over it. And then Sphere Source himself. I personally think it is an awesome looking monster. However, <laughs> however, I don't think it was good for an episode one monster at all. Especially when you look at interviews with Takose and he's like, I really wanted it to be a big, super big monster that looks impossible for Ultraman to defeat and really shows the strength of Ultraman. Yeah, I definitely think Spherosaurus definitely should have been saved for the strong type debut episode. I just think it's such waste of potential. I also wish they would have tried a little bit more to make it look less like Shepardon, because it's a little too obvious. Next up, I noticed a lot of bad effects in the episode. Just so many bad effects. Especially in the beginning when there's this big reflective building and nothing is reflected onto it. And just the composite shots look awful. There's often like no sense of distance in it. Also, this is just an issue with Ultraman Decker as a whole. I think it is one of the worst transformation devices and transformation scenes ever. It is so needlessly long and there's so many pointless parts to it it is so stupid and frankly it just doesn't look good just the pauses and the amount of times he has to press all the stuff in there just be turn it on put the card in click a button and transform that's all it should be but there's so much more to it it's ridiculous and the rise the rise is so dumb people say like that shift to the side is supposed to be a reference to Dinah's rise and it's not really it's just something thrown in there that just completely throws the whole thing off and looks awful now this next thing just like the last one isn't something that'll be only exclusive to episode one but it is heavily in the fault of episode one and that is the fact that a lot of Kanata's character comes from his parents being stuck in space now or he thinks they're dead on Mars or whatever. We should, this episode should have been a lot of him being with them so we could see their relationship together and really understand it. Him just saying they're on Mars means nothing because it really doesn't show that he cares about them at all. Especially when a lot of what he does in this episode really seems to stem from the fact he's worried about them. But instead, a lot of the show in general just seems to really be like him talking about his grandparents. Yet he's also like, oh man, I miss my parents. Like, that's supposed to be his main motivation. Yet we've never seen them together or really know what the relationship is at all and have a reason to care about it. And then the spheres covering the Earth in episode one, I feel like these two kind of go together. 
I think they definitely should have waited a few episodes for the series to cover Earth. I feel like having it happen in episode one really leads to bad pacing. That's about it for episode one. If I had to give it a rating, I'd give it three out of ten. On to episode two. Now, episode two, just like before, also has something that's an issue with a lot of the show I'm noticing, and that is the time jump. The one year time jump between episode one and two is handled badly. None of the dialogue in the episode at all, none of the character interactions feel like a year later. It feels like one day later. Maybe don't give us a time jump if the only thing it's going to lead to is problems. It just feels so unnaturally executed and just really poorly done that I wish they wouldn't have done it at all. And then the capsule monsters and Meekless. I definitely think the capsule monsters shouldn't be in the show at all, especially because of how Meekless was treated in this episode as an example. He did absolutely nothing. There was absolutely no point of him being there. Also, there was absolutely no explanation why Decker even has the capsule monsters in the first place, which I find a little ridiculous. We better get an explanation. And the capsule monsters better get used better later on. Now, this episode also wasted the introduction of the Guts Hawk. I thought it was ridiculous. I was just thrown in there for two seconds to do absolutely nothing. What a horrible reveal of it. Such waste of potential. It could be later episode, they're like about to die and all of a sudden Nick swoops in and saves the day and does a bunch of awesome stuff. Here in episode two, it just shows up for two seconds and then disappears without an explanation. And then the dark lightning on Death Drago. Oh my God. Death Drago got the dark lightning from Carmera. The single Death Drago. Now, all of a sudden, there's a third Death Drago, because there was one in the Trigger movie. I don't even think that one did anything. And now this one, all of a sudden, has the Dark Lightning 2. That makes absolutely no sense. Unless there's, like, another secret Dark Giant somewhere giving it that energy. Also, the one from Trigger had red eyes when he was able to shoot the Dark Lightning. Now, this one doesn't have red eyes, and it's still able to shoot the Dark Lightning. Which, again, it got from Chimera. It doesn't make any sense. Now, really the only reason I could find that they did this was so they could reuse footage from episode 5 of Trigger. Yeah, that's right, they reused footage from episode 5 of Trigger. So stupid. This episode also gets a 3 out of 10. The only thing redeeming it was the nice nature shots. Episode 3. Episode 3 was frankly really boring. The character interactions were so stale, it was shot so stale. Speaking of the dialogue, they were talking about what the heck the spheres are and just figuring out basic information that we already knew in episode 3. A year, mind you, after they showed up. Why are they talking about such basic information a year after they showed up? This should be common knowledge. Also, I think something that would have made this episode make a lot more sense would be to move the training scene for the planes to episode 4 four and take the training scene from episode four and stick it in this one and in fact i also think the guts hawk shouldn't have been used at all in this episode either or on that in a sec there was a super super underwhelming fight in this episode strong types debut put me to sleep there was hardly any interesting cinematography hardly anything interesting happened in it besides punches. Only thing I really liked about it was how he defeated Skullgamore in the end. And back to the Guts Hawk thing, and I think the main issue with Decker as a whole, is the fact that it is so overstuffed in the beginning episodes. What did episode 3 have? It had Decker, another Decker form, the Guts Hawk, the Guts Falcon, and the Narsudesi, and three capsule monsters at his disposal. I'm sorry, but when all that is going up against Gamora, it's hard to feel like there's any stakes at all. Even when he turned into Sphere Gamora. I feel like all this should have been spread out across later episodes and take the capsule monsters out entirely. Episode 3 gets a 5 out of 10. Now, episode 4, I could tell you right now, gets a 10 out of 10 from me. Episode 4 was phenomenal. You know why? Because Sujimoto directed it. I think Sujimoto is so much better of a director and just one of the best directors in Ultraman right now in general. The only one I'd say is better than him is Taguchi. And this episode really, really shows why, if you ask me. It was an amazing tribute episode to Monzarger between the old man with the camera, combining both previous Monzargers together to create this one. There was amazing cinematography in it, like the mirror shot. Oh my god, I loved that so much. It was an amazing fight and would have made for a way better debut for Strong Type. Monzarger's suit was pretty darn great, way better than the Gazard suit from Trigger. The effects in it felt so much better oh my god there's so many beautiful shots and there was just a great story to the episode like I loved the fountain thing there were only like super super minute details that I think could have been done a little better in the episode 
but they're so minute that I still give it a 10 out of 10. It was truly fantastic. Sujimoto is such a god at tribute episodes. He really is. Look at episode 18 of Z. Look at episode 19 of Z. That speaks for itself, doesn't it? He knows exactly how to nail the style of his show and use the right amount of references that leave you satisfied without messing up the flow of the show at all. Really makes you wonder why he isn't the main director of any of the tribute shows. And there you go. There are my thoughts on the first four episodes of Ultraman Decker. I think it definitely has potential, but they definitely need to work on doing a lot of things better. The first three episodes were miserable, in my opinion, but I definitely think if they really try, they could pump out something good. So I really hope that they do. This has been Godzilla Productions TV. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, check out my Instagram, and I'll see you next time. Bye.